All right, last example. We've got x-intercepts and y-intercepts again. y equals 0, x equals 0. So 0, like we talked about on the last example, the denominator doesn't matter because if the numerator equals 0, 0 divided by anything is going to equal 0. So we got 0 equals x cubed plus 1. No harm done if you put the den denominator there and multiply and multiply because it always cancels out. Subtract the 1, you get negative 1 equals x cubed. To undo an x cubed, you need a cubed root. Cubed root of negative 1 is negative 1 because negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. So that's our x-intercept right at negative 1. y-intercept. Um, the x value equals 0. So 0 plus 1, 0 cubed, and 0 squared, that cancels out. We're left with 1 divided by 0. This is undefined, and so we actually know that we're not going to have inty, any y-intercepts. So vertical asymptotes. That again has everything to do with the denominator. Set the denominator equal to zero. We've got that on our, our first page of notes, or rather our second one. And so then we set x squared equal to zero. So take the square root of both sides. That's where our plus or minus zero shows up again, but it doesn't matter. So we have a vertical asymptote at zero. Dashed line going up. It's not going to we're not able to plug in 0 as we saw with our y-intercept. It's never ever going to cross that um, or touch it anyways. Horizontal asymptote. Everything to do with your p's and your q's. The degree. The degree on top is 3. The degree on the bottom is 2. And so p is bigger than q. So what that means is the top is going to get bigger a lot faster than the bottom and so there is not going to be a horizontal asymptote. None at all. P is equal to Q, P is greater than Q doesn't give you any. Our domain, again, closely related to our vertical asymptote. We can't get a Y when we plug in X equals zero. So our domain is all real numbers, except X can't equal zero. Our range. Our range, we're gonna graph it first and then see what it looks like. We want it to add the top first. So x cubed plus 1 divided by x squared this is slightly different from what we've seen. Um, this is right here is what we call a slant asymptote and it comes as a result of the degree on top being one bigger than the, de the degree on the bottom. And so you actually divide, you can use long division or uh, to figure out what the slant asymptote is. But we're not going to go that deep. In this case, the slant asymptote is y equals x because x cubed divided by x squared is going to give you x. Um, but in our case, we're going to just sort of utilize the graphing calculator as a tool to help us out with what the graph looks like. And there it is, our last example. And so I'll see you guys in class and we're going to be going through some more of these. I forgot about the range. Our range, the y values will keep going down this way and none of them were skipped along the way, and so our, dom our range is just going to be all real numbers. But the key to what we're doing is all in this, the asymptotes. Know what happens if p is less than q, the degree on top is less than the bottom, when they're equal, or when the top is bigger. So, look over those, know those, and I'll see you in class.